Hello, and welcome to my new trigger tutorial series on my advanced triggers. This is for my trigger pack for Retold, which adds extra functionality for advanced trigger makers. If you are new, I do not recommend this trigger pack or tutorial, as you will probably get overwhelmed by all the new functionality. Instead, I recommend you check out Yebagoon's trigger tutorial series, where he goes over how to use a trigger and covers some basic concepts. However, if you have used a few triggers and are wanting to take it to the next level with more advanced functionality and having lots of shortcuts, you have come to the right place. First of all, let's make sure that you have the mod installed. So if you go to the browse, go to the browse mods and let's just search up my mod and you should find it's called custom trigger pack with this picture of a wonder with the antibytes. Once that's installed, let's over to the editor. And if you have it installed correctly, you should find that there are a greatly expanded set of trigger effects in there with lots of uh, things that you will not recognize. Now, before we start, there's one major thing to take note of. A lot of my triggers require some additional functionality provided behind the scenes in order for them to function. This is provided by a special trigger called the trigger loader. This trigger loader needs to be the first trigger that is on the map. Now for a new map, that's easy. Simply insert a trigger, go to the effects, and let's find the uh, trigger loader. And it should be called initialize trigger loader. Once that's inserted, you are good to go. However, what happens if you are wanting to edit an existing map and there's already a load of triggers installed and you want to insert the trigger loader? Well, if you just insert a new trigger, it's not going to be the first trigger. But what you can do is take the first trigger that you created, duplicate it, and then click on the original trigger and make that your trigger loader. So in this case, this would be trigger one. We'll go to uh, here, let's just give it a name so it's clear. And we want to insert the trigger loader. You might think you can simply reorder these triggers in order to make the initialized trigger the first one, but that is not true. Unfortunately, despite the fact you can move the triggers up and down, it does not change the internal order of the triggers. Now, once you've got the triggers added, we are good to go. Let's give a simple example of using some of my triggers. So that's for a bit of fun. Attach a unit from one to another one. So let's, let's take a battle ball and let's put that down. And let's also put a Pegasus down to attach it to. Let's head over to triggers. We've got our trigger loader already installed. So let's put a, another trigger in, which we can just have run immediately with, oh, on game start. Uh, let's call it attach. And let's browse the effects and find the attach effect. Sometimes the uh, searching breaks. It has nothing to do with my triggers. This is just a bug in the game. Let's find the attach unit. You'll see that it requires a trigger loader because it has the NTL prefix on. Let's just do the basic version. We'll source the unit and the ball and we'll target the Pegasus and we will start the scenario. And there we go. We can see that the ball is now attached to the Pegasus unit and we'll move along with its position. Finally, before we finish, I'm just going to quickly explain some of the trigger variants that we have. Because you'll you'll probably notice in the trigger list that there are a lot of new variants of existing triggers. The easiest one to explain probably will be with this one. The area change type trigger. 
So you have the standard change type trigger where you've got the center unit and the normal parameters. But you'll probably see with this one there's a lot of different variants. And you might think, what on earth is the, is the point of these differences? Well, these are provided in order to aid people who want to do hybrid scripting. Where they want to, instead of putting values, to put script values or variables or other snippets in place of values. So the first example being that we've got the change type by ID. This is the same as the normal one, except that the center unit, instead of selecting the unit, you're now typing an, an ID of a unit. Every unit in the game has a ID. If we go into object info, we can see it there. It says unit ID. Obviously, that is not the usual way you'd want to do it, since that's more of a pain than selecting the unit. But the advantage here is that if you declared a variable, you can now put that as the center unit. So if we had a variable called battle bore, then we could just simply type battle bore. And if they held the ID of the unit, then that would get selected. We've then got a version called relax. The relaxed version makes it so that numerical fields and players now can have variables instead. So normally you would set the player from a drop down, however now you can type it. This is incredibly useful for situations where you've done a special loop and you want the player to the you want the trigger to apply to all players. You would be putting a variable here instead of the player number. You then got the free proto. This is kind of similar to the relax, except that the proto unit and the unit type become freely typable fields. Note that these are strings, so if you are putting variables in, you will need to break out of the out of the string in order to put your variable in. So, if you had similarly a variable called battle bore, and you wanted to put it as a unit type, you would need to put the quote and plus and then put your variable in afterwards. That's the same with anything that takes text as an input. Next we have the free text. Now the free text is the freely typeable one. This makes every single field one that you can type in which allows you to put snippets in all possible fields, as you can see here. This is used for the cases where the other variants do not provide the flexibility that is needed. These variants will be used and shown with future videos where I will be producing some worked examples and making use of some of these variants so you can see what is going on. But otherwise, this rounds off the first video of the series of the advanced trigger tutorials. I look forward to seeing you in future videos and good luck with your map making.